Yeah. So in 10 days I I got four jobs. Um okay. I yeah. think the skill that you had at that early stage in life people in this generation don't. And it's the whole community that is uh, uh, evolved into this uh, activities. They all have gathered well uh, for the call when it was made. Mm -hmm. But it's all hosted by you, planned by you and executed by you. Privilege I feel on. That's that's as simple as that. Very humble with your words. <laughs> that's a fact of life. A courage into people to say that life is getting back to normal. What next have you planned out for the rest of the journey? That's it. It's, it's not. It's never a one-man one journey. Man it's a whole collective guys effort that has gone into. Oh yeah. Okay. Somebody might have to uh, kickstart it, uh, take a lead. So guys, today with us we have a guest who's done his schooling in the Saint Xavier's Mumbai, done his. Graduation from the Narsi Munji College of uh, India, which is also known as the Chartered Accountant Factory of India, and then he's gone on to the United States and pursued his MBA from the Regis University in uh, United States. Uh, then we we'll cut that. So he comes in with over forty-five years of experiences of life, a successful business entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and one of the biggest names in the Dubai cricket world. Today we have with us Mr. Sudhakar Shetty. Hi, Uncle. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, Karthik. Uh, Thank you very much uh, oh, for having me on into no, no, your this no. podcast. Uh, wish you all success, mate. Thank you so much, Uncle. So, Uncle, I would like to start the podcast. Yeah, Uncle, will <laughs> Okay, what do you want me to say? Call, call, call him, Mr. Shetty. Okay. Sudhakar. Sudhakar. All right. So, Mr. Shetty. Uh, so, I would like to start this off by like I'm. I'm certain that you have a lot of experiences. A lot of beautiful experiences in life and a lot of uh, bad ones as well. But let's focus on the good parts today. So, I would like to know about all these experiences that started off from your early days. Maybe probably back when uh, you started uh, getting into the entire sports thing back in college when you were in Saint Xavier's. I think there's a very interesting story of when you got into the, uh, the school team of the. I think it was cricket or football, if I'm not wrong. You were the captain of the football team. Oh, that was universities. So that was universities. Yeah, university, college. So there was a very interesting story where there was uh, there was some player who didn't show up, and then you went on the chain uh, without getting. Uh, I would like to know about that story first of all before we start anything. Seems like a very interesting segment. <laughs> yeah, that um, as a child I was known uh, to be a fighter to the core. Okay, never would give up. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank God that uh, we grew up in an environment yeah. unlike now, okay. uh, where uh, not that, the, uh, that those those parents didn't have much uh, time and uh, ideas of supporting okay. their kids in the uh, in, in uh, barring the non academy area. Beyond that, no. Today, mm -hmm. of course, parents are there yeah. to support them to the health. Okay. Now this happened. Uh, uh, my college, Narsi Muji, we were we were the finalist. We uh, lost the finals in the intercollege, but uh, in the in the trials universities, mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, one of the standby okay. of the team. Okay, and we had a camp in Goa, and that's for our uh, West Zone University. Okay, and um, uh, Bombay Mumbai University was uh, hosting the tournament. Okay. Um, standby normally doesn't get into the team mm -hmm. because there are 16 members. 16 members. But then um, I requested uh, the uh, sports officer of mm -hmm. uh, Mumbai University and told him that I would like to go with the team. He said, yes, you can, but you have to pay for all your costs because you're mm -hmm. not on the budget of uh, the, the, team. <clears throat> the team because mm -hmm. there are 15 members budget. Okay. So just uh, to put perspective in place, Goa University, mm -hmm. today it's Goa University, then it was not Goa University, it was part of Mumbai University. Okay. I think in 1994, Goa got separated and mm -hmm. they had their own dedicated university. Okay. So I'm now talking about 1980, 81. 81, 88. Okay. So I went to the team, mm -hmm. we had the camp. Mm -hmm. There was one member who was shot. Okay. And he was a Goan player, mm -hmm. but uh, he was going for some other trials. Okay. I think uh, uh, junior national trials for mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't turn up. He didn't turn up uh, for the entire camp. Okay. Now, uh, the day when the tournament starts, mm -hmm. being host, we were supposed to play the first match. Mm -hmm. So the team list has to go at about 10.30. Okay. <laughs> and this gentleman doesn't turn up. Okay. And uh, then I was actually the 16th man. So my name came into the team list. Okay. And I was baptized as an university player. Okay. And uh, 15 minutes later, when the team had already gone, mm -hmm. I was given the colors. Okay. 15 minutes later, it was uh, then... Uh, 
um, uh, th this gentleman comes up. His name was Colin Was. Okay. So he turns up and um, well, nothing could be done. So okay. I played the West Zone part. Okay. <clears throat> so obviously I'm there. Okay. Now, as luck would have it, mm -hmm. we got qualified and we, we went on to play All India. Okay. But in the journey, one mm -hmm. of the players got injured. Okay. As we finished the West Zone. Mm -hmm. So Colin Was also came in. I thought it was a huge poetic justice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they say that, you know, fortune favors a brave. Yeah, exactly. So that, there it was. <clears throat> okay. I played. He also played. Mm. And end of the day, yeah, we played all India. And then later, of course, it was very simple. Next year also, I played at mm. university. Third year. Uh, was a joint uh, mm -hmm. captain we played mm -hmm. the third all india so mm -hmm. that was how it was what would you call this would you call it luck or would you call it the passion that even though you were on a reserve you were still there <coughs> like it was fine okay i'm not on the expense of the team but i'm still going to come with you because you know probably it's an experience that i would like to see so what would you term this would it be would you call it luck or would you call it uh, dedication and being passionate about the game uh, luck no karthik okay. there are three three elements into this okay. one is that a risk taking. Okay. Remember, I had to pay money from my own pocket, mm -hmm. and I would not get that money from my parents. So, whatever little saving I might have had through mm -hmm. doing some odd jobs here and there, and then some pocket money, okay. uh, the, 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 hardly there was any. Mm -hmm. So, all that collected to put together, I had to do it. Okay. Number one, and not that my college also was supporting because I was not in the mainstream. Okay. If it had come into the mainstream, then my college would also give us, you know, a daily allowance. Mm -hmm. Um, that's it. And Mumbai University also would give da daily allowance, but then I'm not in the main team, so I won't mm -hmm. get there also. So it was a risk that I had taken, putting money from my pocket mm -hmm. and taking a chance to travel with the team and be there. Okay. So risk taking. Risk taking. One. Number two <clears throat> is that I, somewhere in my own intuition was saying mm -hmm. that why not give us a chance? Why not? I mean, mm -hmm. I've got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice, beautiful uh, stay in Goa. Maybe. <laughs> and then uh, that was it. And not that they were spending money on my hotel staying because we were first in a hostel, which was free, I guess. Okay. And then only last two days uh, before the tournament, uh, the team got shifted into the hotel. Okay. So that's the second one. Mm -hmm. The third one was that, um, you know, if you don't take chance in life, mm -hmm. you don't move forward in life. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not, the, 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 see, risk is one side. Chance is another. And sometimes you say, no, 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 I won't, I won't do that. Mm -hmm. But here is that, uh, all right, what's my loss? Mm -hmm. I've given a chance. Okay. That's that's how it was. Okay. And then it all uh, met to an ultimate success. That Definitely. is the what that's I would what always look forward for. And that, you see, there is a big takeaway in this okay. that, you know, later in part of life also as my life journey moved on, mm -hmm. many, a th many a time it, such a situation had come up again and again. But then uh, for me, decision taking was never a difficult job. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's interesting. So what, what could you say that, you know, uh, I think the skill that you had at that early stage in life, people in this generation don't. Like they're very uh, slow with decision making. They <coughs> they don't they want to be in their comfort zone a lot. But there's a very important thing that you need to be out of comfort zone to grow. So uh, what could you say led you to be this uh, like you know a really good decision maker, analyze good analyzing in risk management and stuff like that. Is there any background that happened with your early childhood or something back in school or something like that that led you to be able to take that decision that day that has helped you throughout? Like you know that's a very important uh, thing that happened in your life. But at least uh, earlier back in say so, was there something important that happened back when you were young you would like us to know about? Uh, let me address the first point that you said that the younger generation of today, they are a bit slow, mm -hmm. they are hesitant um, and they're not too sure about the risk or decision making. Mm -hmm. And uh, vis a vis to we guys, um, a guy like, like me, I think all, all of us, we are from a generation which is a uh, uh, a unique generation, golden generation, yeah. as I, how, how I would love to say. <laughs> okay. uh, we, uh, uh, I'm saying both both the sides. Both sides I'm yeah. seeing uh, a generation like you, Karthik, okay. right in front of me, and I'm also, of course, Talking I'm about trying to think. When I was that age, how what, was I? Uh, uh, there are two different two, two school of thoughts there. Okay. One is that um, uh, now, currently, there is one or two child syndrome. Okay. During our time, our pair of my, my we were we were five siblings. Okay. So one one uh, one person earning, mm -hmm. and then you know the whole money has to be taken. The whole uh, family has to be taken care by that uh, mm -hmm. uh, by, by by that uh, earning. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two. Uh, we didn't have mobile. 
So it doesn't matter. No track was kept where we went out, what we did. Of course, we always went and did good things. But then there was no one saying, where are you? What's happening? How you are and all. So there was nothing called a protection uh, mm. kind of an environment. We were protected at home. Mm. Mom, dad, they were very much, of course, concerned what's happening. Out. Okay. So not that they were not uh, keeping track. They were. Mm. But that we were not always like, you know, like if you have to cross a road, mm. there wasn't a mom's finger or a, or a dad, uh, you know, catching your hand and Get taking you across. Mm. You have to do it yourself. And I come from a place called Mumbai. Okay. And Mumbai <laughs> makes a person, the way he is, what he is, with the opportunity that is, that place provides. Perfect. If you have lived a life uh, complementing that, mm. yeah, you will survive anywhere in the world. Definitely. Number one. Number two, I think <clears throat> the, the, the protection environment that what the current kids they get mm. does not allow them to take chance, risk. Mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, it's just all protecting. It's not mm-hmm. just protecting. And uh, I think parents have forgotten how they grew up. Okay. Like it could be your parent, possible mm-hmm. how they grew up. Mm-hmm. They suddenly feel that no, no, no. Karthik is my only our only child, mm-hmm. and I have to do this, I have to do that. Then why will Karthik will go out of his comfort zone? Definitely. He's been he's been provided. He's been fended. There's a shelter there, permanent, understood, everything. Mm-hmm. In possible in my case. It's like simple when we are not done in 1920 our graduation possible till then the roof is there the food food on the plate is given after that go go out mm. earn earn some bread for yourself and also mm. to the family okay you guys don't have the pressure mm-hmm. definitely you guys you know like for example if there's a job coming up you will be choosy mm-hmm. what salary they're going to give me what position they're going to give me okay. uh, what how are they going to treat me mm. But during my time, beggars were no choosers. Yeah, definitely. Salary, okay, okay, sir. Mm. Job, okay, sir. Mm. And so and so. Now, of course, I wouldn't say that I had to go through all of those things because coming from a, a bit of those uh, elite uh, selected uh, <laughs> okay. set of people uh, as far as um, b- both education as well as sports is concerned. But yet, I w- I had put in that grind myself. Okay. So, that's uh, that's how it is. That's, that's, that's very interesting. So... Uh, now, if I come to the point of uh, the younger generations now versus the generation back then, would you say that there are uh, there there are a lot of opportunities for the guys now than back then? And uh, but still, there are a lot of uh, new stories about people in this generation who are turning out to be really successful, whether it's going to be through like you know cryptocurrency or stuff like that. So, <coughs> what is are these people? Uh, still sitting like at this point i feel like people are still sitting in their comfort zone and still making millions so what would you what would your opinion uh, be on something like that opportunity is different okay as simple as that okay during our time we also had opportunity mm-hmm. but possibly limited limited the opportunity was limited mm-hmm. like look at the studies that we did mm-hmm. what what was there during my time it was arts science uh, and commerce commerce and if you are very good, then further down you branch down to medical okay. and then you went to engineering. engineering. There was no computer mm. and electronic. Mm. No, it was not. Engineering, of course, had electronic, but it was not one of those uh, known kind of a thing. Mm. But today, when a young kid is just in 9th, 10th, mm. is already having an idea or the idea has already been put in or the orientation to school is already taken place, Telling him that what he is good, what he could do, or what or what the life would be further down. Mm-hmm. Then there are parents who are chartering their their uh, their uh, course of life, how academically it should be further down, what should they do, mm-hmm. and they are willing to fund. Okay. Later, as you move on, now today, you know, come to think about it, today you have this great organization like Google, Amazon, mm-hmm. uh, Apple. Now these are all things for us like fairy tales. Mm-hmm. They have changed people's life. Yeah, definitely. They have changed how other in- industries they work. Mm-hmm. And they have given an insight opportunity big time for you to, fl- for you to bloom, flower and grow. Okay. Today you can dream. And you can dream the way you want it, how you want it. Mm-hmm. There is a market which is, uh, there, is, there, is, there is an environment which is willing to give you that opportunity. And there is a fund provider who's who's willing to pump in for your requirement, your parents. We lack that. Okay. So that's as simple as that. So today, if you, I mean, if you just say that, okay, I, you know, I, today kids are doing this computer, uh, computer programming or virtual games, mm-hmm. like my son does a virtual game. Okay. And uh, then I thought that it's just a waste of time. But today it's a, it's about $25 billion business. 
I, I, I really jumped out of my skin when I heard that. But that's a fact of life and he, wanted, he is now making a career out of it. I could not think in my wildest dream. Uh, I, you know, I, I used to get absolutely uh, very annoyed with him when he used to play, you know, do, yeah, get into the PlayStation and the sorts of wasting time. But now today my ideas of life has changed. My perspective on that particular career has changed today. Mm. So I think it would be best to say that, you know, be it no matter how old we are, you need to be always ready to adapt and evolve through the changes that uh, the world is bringing in with, you know, like when you mentioned the uh, the gaming thing, which back then was be like, okay, it's just a waste of time. Why are you wasting time on this? But now people are actually pushing it forward and making a career out of it. Like you said, it's a $25 uh, billion market. So that's a very interesting thing to for people to know and understand. But the main thing that I should, I feel like uh, people lack is uh, evolvement. You know, they're, they're in one set of space and I see this uh, very commonly out nowadays. They're stuck with their line of uh, chain of command. They don't want to adapt. They don't want to get into something new. They don't want to explore. They don't want to learn. Is that something that uh, you've seen also during your experiences? I see it every day. Okay. I see it today also. Right. Say the mindset, fixed ideas, mm. not willing to be accepting things which is on reality there. Okay. Not evolving with time. Mm not trying to accommodate, adjust and move on. Mm -hmm. Still trying to think that, you know, oh, my time, this is to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, nobody wants to hear that story. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's happened my, during my time. How does it matter to a person right in front of me? Mm -hmm. Okay, sir, good, very good. You know, it happened to your time. But my time is different. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know what, that, yeah, we are the greatest, but you are the latest. Okay. And I'd rather be, if, if my greatness has to be kept up, I'd rather <laughs> keep up to mark with the latest. Okay. Then I am not in the race with you, mm -hmm. but I'm understanding you better. Okay. I'm trying to reason out life better. Mm -hmm. So when you look into that kind of an, uh, uh, scenario, mm -hmm. it makes life easy for everyone. Okay. Adaptability, adjustment mm -hmm. and execution of a joint plan. Okay. That's it. If today, if a person is running an organization and if he's hiring a young guy of uh, uh, possibly, say, in his mid-20s, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not saying that he should get down to that age to understand that. Mm -hmm. No, he can amalgamate both. A okay. fusion of that age and his experience put together. Mm -hmm. Take this experience to his fold. You put that experience down into the, here. In the, I think it will be a nice fusion. A definitely. very brilliant success fusion. Very interesting uh, perspective. <laughs> So, Uncle, I, Mr. Shakti, I would like to get into your um, work life right now. So, so I would like to know how it started. What was the first thing that you did as uh, a way to get remunerated in terms of money or be it whatever? So, what were the first things? I mean, as a child, when you were growing up, what was the thing that you want to get into? What was your dream job? If that is some, the question that I might ask you. Um. Uh, I grew up in an environment, um, uh, that my school that you said, St. Xavier's, uh, it's in Ville Parle in Mumbai. Okay. It's, uh, it's, it's about, it, it, it was formed in 1890, a very old institution. Mm -hmm. We are very proud of it. And um, uh, it, it had given us a solid background, uh, academic background, uh, good launching pad. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I was also very good in sports those days. Okay. Um, so that definitely. Well, I still play, by the way, when I say those days. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> we'll come to that as well. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. The, I thought that yes, possibly I could, I will take up a job uh, as far as uh, sports is concerned. So I did get a, a few offers from some companies, mm -hmm. but I think as as um, as I finished my graduation uh, from school, I went on to graduate. I said, no, let me finish my graduation. Uh, played in university so that further actually enhanced my opportunity into the job market. So it wasn't a great struggle to get. But then suddenly a thought went into, do I really want to take up a sportsman job, mm. play for some more years? And then after that, what happens? I said, no, instead of that, I thought I could be a better salesman. Okay. A better salesman. Okay. And I went and took up a job, uh, which was actually many people... Uh, laughed at me uh, then and they were right I thought uh, I got a 600 rupees salary okay. per month a job and meanwhile the sports um, organization which was hiring me uh, that was uh, giving me about uh, 2800 rupees 
Okay. And th- that this there was a big difference and that money was a uh, big big, a, a big uh, difference. But then I had clear ideas in life. Mm. I said, it's okay. I had age in my hand. Mm-hmm. I had a d- plan in my, ha- in my mind. Mm-hmm. And then subsequently also to, you know, because I thought that my playing days and whatever is going to be, it's like a shelf life this much. If my life is this, playing day is this. After mm-hmm. that, from year to year, who's going to fill up? What's going to happen? Okay. I know my academy will stand by me, but mm-hmm. no, that was not my goal. Mm. My goal is that no, leave this. I enjoyed it. Mm. Come out of it. Move on. Okay. Adapt, adapt, and accept something different uh, that you want to. And uh, I had no pressure from home. Mm. Do this, do that. Do the, those, the, those dictat would be there mm. always. Parent would decide. As now they don't. Then they they used to decide mm. what to be done, what not. But then I was a bit of a rebel. So then they thought that leave him alone. Okay. Um, yes, so I joined uh, an organization uh, which is uh, which is called Parley's, which is Thumbs Up Limca Gold Sport, one of the okay. leading beverage organization, mm. as a sales officer. Okay, that was it. That was where, where it all it, it all started, mm-hmm. and uh, worked there for about good uh, six seven years, and then after that went on to a couple of other places, went to Pune, went to Calcutta, mm-hmm. and to Delhi. Worked worked in those market in different okay. t- uh, till. Pepsi was launching in India. Okay. And um, um, Pepsi franchise was with uh, Walters, Walters, a company called mm-hmm. Walters, which is a Tata subsidy. Okay. If I told you I have ever had a dream of working for an organization, it was Tata's. Tata's. Yeah, Tata's is such a huge, company. great organization. Mm-hmm. A co- company with a lot of ethics, a lot of principles, a lot of pride. Mm. And they, you know, employee would, you know, be singing glory of it. And uh, and they, they were also supporting for the sports uh, okay. ga- background also. So, as soon as this opportunity came up, so I was hired by Volta's as a Pepsi launch manager for Western part of India. Okay. So, they, I mean, beverage background anyway I had. Mm. So, I brought uh, the value on the table. Mm. So that's it. So I think worked for about three, four years. Mm-hmm. Then I branched out um, uh, to Qatar, Doha, Qatar. Okay. Uh, not that uh, it was money as what you spoke about. No, it's not the money that we are. I said, well, let me have some international exposure. Let's see what's happening in the overseas. Uh, overseas market. And then I came in as a country manager for Rainbow Milk. Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't last long there. <laughs> I quit the job in 18 months. Okay. Because I uh, found that it's a too, too small a, a market to work and operate. Money was okay. Mm-hmm. But as I said, money was not the thing for me. That satisfaction uh, of Exposure. doing things, mm-hmm. being, you know, whatever I do, I definitely take passion into my stride and move forward on that uh, okay. job role. So I was actually, uh, I uh, well discussed with my wife and told her, look, I think uh, possibly not a great decision to come down to Doha. Mm-hmm. I think we need to pack our bags and go back and go back to Mumbai and then, you know, get back. Mumbai okay. uh, uh, Mumbai would always welcome okay. back uh, me there and job would never be a problem to mm-hmm. get one. Mm-hmm. But on the way, we actually took a small break down in Dubai for a holiday, okay. just for 10 days. Uh-huh. And then for fun sake, I used to actually put my CV. Everywhere. So in 10 days, I, used to, I got four jobs. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And then this I'm talking in 1994. Mm-hmm. That's when Dubai was building up. To uh, it wasn't yet then. Not it yet. was only in 2002 onwards. So onwards, okay. Yeah. So there, and then uh, I got a job in Algorair, mm-hmm. the Masafi, the Masafi guys. Okay. And um, we had, of course, I was the marketing uh, assistant for uh, uh, a product called Snapples. Okay. Um, well, worked for some time mm-hmm. till uh, my ex uh, friend. He was also my boss, the Dutch man. Mm-hmm. He had started his company. Okay. So I joined him. And uh, the company was called Holland House. Holland House. So, yeah, and that's known for food business. Mm. We did pretty well for six months. Mm. And uh, f- subsequently, then I thought I should do a little business of my own. Okay. So I started my own food uh, distribution company called Himalaya Food Stuff Company. Mm-hmm. Everything was beautiful, nice. Till the shit hit the fan in 2005 <laughs> end. The recession? Uh, no, uh, uh, I, I think in India there was this avian bird flu. You cool. might have been knowing yeah, the, yeah. You know, the, the chicken yeah, bird flu. It happened in 2005-06 and there was four container of, uh, 40 feet container of uh, eggs that I was importing from India from Agrocorpex. Okay. UAE government uh, gave a blanket uh, 
notice that no poultry to be imported from India because mm. of the avian birth flu. And overnight, I got washed out. I lost about hundred and eighty thousand okay. dollars, just about half a million, and life got reduced to zero as far as money was concerned. Remember that one thing that I said in the beginning of my university journey. Yeah. Right. You have nothing to lose. Kya laaye the, kya le jaoge. Kya le jaoge. I know today when I look back, <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> so, but nothing. I mean, I had my two sons were studying also, and um, my wife asked me, "So next what?" Mm. So I said, "I'll start playing." Okay. And I was just about forty-five years old. Okay. Not much old. Not much. <laughs> I say forty-five and, years young. <laughs> ah, okay, that's a nice one. Good, yeah. very good. So when you look into that um, that perspective, so what was that? Mm. My son used to then uh, play. He, he he used to be trained. He he was training cricket. Okay. For cricket. Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to watch the academy where he used to train. And uh, then uh, I was a coach earlier also when I was in college. Also, I used to I used to train Coaching. two. I used to train train two teams. Mm. Girls hockey. Okay. And uh, boys football team. Okay. So my school Saint Xavier's also I did I did I did a small stint of uh, coaching for two years. Okay. Uh, that's way back uh, in the eighties. Okay. Uh, so coaching was not a new thing. Mm. Cricket. I was always passionate about this game. Mm. I, I actually, as a as a state athlete, state athlete, when I was in school, I was a state athlete. Uh, so. Running and football and cricket was in parallel on the same thing, but I didn't do a lot of justice to my cricket uh, skill and talent. Okay. Because I w- then opted out for the faster games. Okay. But it was always there because I played Harry Shield. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harry Shield is a famous. Uh, I mean, for uh, I don't know how much yeah. you know about <laughs> it. Uh, it became more uh, more famous thanks to Sachin Tendulkar and Vinod Kambli for uh, their. Uh, 600 odd uh, or 652 odd runs partnership okay. that was created. So I played the, that tournament also. So I thought, okay, let me lo- let me do something uh, on sports uh, mm-hmm. ground. And Max Talent Global Sports was born, launched. Born is the right word. Yeah. We didn't actually start training. We went on an overseas tour to Bang- Bangalore, and then a successful tour. We came back, and mm-hmm. then after that. Um, Yet uh, everybody thought that okay, I think uh, Sudhakar Shetty is going to launch the academy. <laughs> no, I didn't launch it. Okay. The name was there, but there was nothing. No activity of training. Okay. I did an inter-school tournament. Okay. So there was you know, some bit of a different marketing plan that was used, not a usual traditional one. Okay. And then that went well. Then the academy was launched in 2006. This all happened in about matter of three to four months. Three four months. Yeah. Um, I had ideas, dreams. All in place, mm-hmm. perfect. But look at the strange thing that has happened. I had stopped sports to pursue a different yeah, career. career. Look, well, justice of the life gets you into the cycle of life. It's got into Brought you back. I'm back into the mix of the sports the game. I think possible. I was born. I was born. I was made for that. You're made. And now it's been 18, 19 years that uh, I am still in it. Okay. And uh, absolutely a memorable, absolutely a journey full of excitement, challenges, a lot of happiness, a lot mm-hmm. of contention. Uh, I think as a sportsman, I could not have asked much more. It's given, it's given me recognition wherever I went, and then, uh, and then having been uh, also uh, done my accreditation of Cricket Australia Level Three. Help mm. me into improving my coaching perspectives. Okay, and um, f- bit of the fitness freak that I was always so it still helped and still today I coach. Definitely. So, yeah. So so that's what it is. Okay. Uh, this journey also got me in touch with some nice, wonderful legends of the game. Okay. Celebrities uh, like Gary Kirsten, John okay. T. Rhodes, Sakhalin Mustak. Okay. And uh, you talk about Rohit Sharma. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shreyas Iyer today, when he is an he is a, a well could be possible future captain also. Mm-hmm. Uh, Max Talent used to go on overseas tours. In fact, we have done forty four of them. So okay. he, one of the tour to Mumbai uh, that was early in two thousand and eight. Okay, eight nine. We used to organize a tournament which was called Max Talent Bestiary Challenge Cup. Okay. Wherever we go, we organize that to make it more competitive, the tour more fun. Okay. So it's not just a match to match. So we are the only one to have done that. Okay. Because you know, organizing a tournament overseas and you are there, it takes a lot of an effort. But yeah. then we would have our own representative to do those work. Mm. 
Shreyas was then about a 12 year old uh, lad you know who was playing in that and then he went on he played for about 3 4 years in this under 16 tournament we going and today um, we recognized and he is our brand ambassador okay. for the match talent trust that we actually which I am the chairman of that okay. which we run so he is a brand ambassador for that interesting quote i mean sorry mr shetty <laughs> i'm sorry i'm used to it but uh, there's a very interesting quote that you very beautifully uh, how do i say it you've represented the court very well age is just a number i think it's back uh, la- last year in october where you represented india at a very young age of yours in uh, a walk 5 km uh, it's a 5 km walk if i'm not wrong and you got gold so what was the what was the mentality what was the thought process that you were in when you decided that you know this is something ye meko karna hai how how did how was the How was the mental state at that point? Yeah, <laughs> Karthik. Once a sportsman is always a sportsman okay. to start with, and when you live with them, uh, never say die spirit. Obviously, there's no surprise in that. Okay. Uh, but having said that, uh, yes, um, yeah, uh, I had not thought about uh, representing in India and becoming an international athlete, participating in. Um, <clears throat> the open uh, masters uh, international meet for age category of between 60 to 65 okay um but i saw that uh, it's happening and it was happening in dubai mm-hmm. so then i thought okay it's just in the backyard right so why not uh, give it a shot so just yeah i know it took a preparation of nearly 14 months uh, to okay. grace myself into meeting the challenges of that uh, event and i participated in two event in fact okay. I, i ran 800 meters which was always my pet event when you you right from my school days mm-hmm. later part of life also till that time i was actively running okay. in compete in competitive uh, athletic world mm-hmm. uh so i yeah i went uh, here also to part in 800 meters and 5 uh, km walk mm-hmm. uh, 800 i bagged a bronze medal okay and i was not too happy So I was just talking to some a friend of mine I told him well, I think tomorrow I go to another event and I am thinking of changing the color of the middle <laughs> so he started laughing he saying and he just joking he said oh, he's a very childhood friend of mine and he said well, if I know you <laughs> you mean business <laughs> and next day yes uh, well morning um, supported by the area where we stay that is you know Sheikh Ahmed square from the community which we are all uh, uh, proud i mean i am particularly proud with because they have been a big motivators to me supporting me well uh, they all came in big numbers to be there mm. it happened to be of course on a sunday so obviously uh, they, they also want to say okay holiday let us be there with sudhakar on that uh, uh, on that arena to support him mm-hmm. my two sons were they came down they drove me down in okay. fact very interesting karthik i remember a journey where possibly for a father is a great feeling because i had, i used to take him for his training and for his matches and today he's driving me for my <laughs> my walk yep. and it's like um, ah poetic justice okay. amazing it was <laughs> and um, yeah um yeah, 8665 65, yes i backed the gold and uh, a good, good, good time itself okay. uh, good timing so i think it was a, a new record okay and uh, yes um, uh, i am surprised i have surprised myself okay. but of course there has been some uh, uh, definitely hard work put behind it mm-hmm. but at the end of the day it was a huge satisfying and it uh, and at this lovely age uh, if you definitely. get a tag of uh, you know representing your country what more exactly and uh, that's it and then after later a lot of people from uh, sas they, they told me that you know they feel inspired they have started taking a, you know a walking mm-hmm. they started coming out in numbers into a lot of physical activities uh, i mean you are part of that uh, community <laughs> right isn't yes. it so we all enjoy definitely and uh, it's somewhere that journey has kick started and uh, it uh, yeah. has uh, rubbed into the others but you really, i really have to give you the credits for bringing out that part of what the uh, water community like our building shake em square has come into because i think when we moved in it was not as much but eventually slowly we started meeting people the groups were created now we have like skirts like you know cricket happening table tennis happening diwali is uh, eid and everything that's happening but it's all hosted by you planned by you and executed by you uh, uh, <laughs> thank you for that uh, uh, 
input, but uh, I think it's the whole community that is uh, uh, evolved into this uh, activities. They all have gathered well uh, for the call when it was made, mm -hmm. and that's it. It's, it's not. It's never a one-man one journey. Group. It's a whole collective guy's effort that has gone into. Oh yeah, okay. Somebody might have to uh, kickstart it, mm -hmm. uh, take a lead, and if uh, possibly. I had that privilege. I feel honored. Okay, and that's that's as simple as that. Very humble with your words. <laughs> that's a fact of life. Definitely. And uh, so let's look into the part of uh, the cup two years, twenty nineteen and twenty twenty, which were a disaster. And like a lot of people say that those those the years that the world was stopped. It was not actually stopped, but a lot of things had uh, reduced in those two years. Uh, this was the time when COVID hit. Dubai. Mm -hmm. But there was also a very interesting news that I've uh, when I was researching about you, I've come across that uh, when the IPL was hosted in Dubai, Max Talent Global Academy had some involvement in that. I would like to know what that exactly was. Yeah, um, in fact, um, uh, Karthik, just to go back a little okay. on that. Uh, when the COVID came in, yes, there were depression, depress depressing feeling all around. Mm -hmm. People were not sure about things what to come uh, because uh, the great uh, pandemic that uh, the era that we lived, uh, not uh, not many of us lived the pandemic of the early the 90s yeah. or the 19th century, what we had. They just heard about it, but nobody knew about it. Mm -hmm. And here people were definitely scared and whatnot. But what we at Max Talent took this as an opportunity. Okay. And we actually, in fact, we had formed a group which was called, you know, Bloom while uh, Bloom while there's gloom. Okay. Bloom while there's gloom. Okay. So, and I had a lot of people joining in that. Mm -hmm. A lot of celebrities, a lot of legends, a lot mm -hmm. of active guys, you know, because every day we would tell them, come on, you do some activity at home. Well, let's post it. Let's okay. post it. So they would do some physical activities at home, some whatever it is. It's just to keep the community engaged. engaged. Just keep the community uh, motivation. It's kind of like just to encourage others that, you know what? Life outside might have come to a standstill or what's whatever, you know, it's slow. But your life should not be, you know, gathering into a, a kind of a little, you know, uh, gloomy moment. No, there's always hope. And in that what happened, I think IPL had, uh, uh, India was still a bit uh, slow on, on uh, releasing uh, the clutch that it had on the IPL, uh, uh, sorry, on the COVID thing. Understandably mm -hmm. so, huge population, anything can go wrong. India had managed it very well. Okay. So they wanted to go slow, but then IPL wanted to come out. So they had this uh, tournament uh, shifted down to UAE. Okay. And um, uh, now they wanted an uh, and, and academy to, academy and its kid also, which is active that day. And uh, wanted to cover up and to say that, yeah, you know, look, there's already life happening here. There's a cricket training back again into action. And uh, then, you know, the IPL uh, is going to happen here. So how much are the kids happy, excited? So there was this coverage that was done for the academy was okay. provided. But before that, I need to also highlight one thing just about, um, um, I think a month and a half ago before this could happen. Um, we were running a lot of cricket training program, virtual cricket tra training program okay. from home. Okay. From home. So we were the first one to do that. So we had our kids spread uh, in different part of uh, Dubai as well as Sharjah. And they would be in their uh, uh, house, maybe bedroom, hall or whatever it is. The coaches had made them what kind of environment they want in ho home. And our coaches were at their place. They would conduct session by session as though like it's happening outside. Instead of outside, now it's actually in the house. Virtual, yeah. Mm. Uh, because Zoom meeting, Google Meet were all happening that way. Yeah. So why not this? So we so we got ideas. We got we kick started there. So fitness uh, program was launched there. So cricket mm. training was launched there. And um, this got recognized by the uh, by an organization in Germany, Bernie, Bernie, uh, I think something in Bernie, I don't exactly remember mm -hmm. the name. So they actually got in touch with me saying that, listen, I think, uh, would you like to register this uh, because this is uh, something which is unique. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then, yes, that led into we getting actually the copyright, world copyright for that program. Okay. So it got recognition in 173 countries in the world. And for the next 49 years, Max Talent Global Sports and joined with Sudhakar Shetty as its mm -hmm. stakeholder. It, it is in our uh, name. Uh, legitimately, we are the owners of that program. Okay. 
So that's it. Then coming down to IPL, uh, because IPL also actually had taken a clue that okay, these guys yeah, yeah. were active. So that is where the connect came in. So Karishma Kota, she was the one who was a model, who was a, you know, who, rep, who was presenting the IPL. She came down. So so they did an event, and uh, yeah, that was that was it. Because uh, as of course uh, it was known, like uh, Maxwell had uh, had that great advantage. The media would always mm. uh, look after from the comments or whatever the activity is happening. We were a hyperactive organization. Okay, and which uh, thanks to the blessing of the people all around uh, and uh, the parents, our parents' support and the well wishers and the cricket management. Mm -hmm. They also all garnered around us well. They supported us well. They support others also. Mm. But then uh, I think possibly we were the children of the more God <laughs> than others. Yeah. Okay. So that was it. That's interesting. So what exactly did it evolve around? So what when you say they had coverage? What exactly were you doing in that perspective over there? You mean IPL? Yeah. Uh, what had happened was see the whole idea was to put in that uh, kind of a a courage into people to say that life is getting back to normal. Mm -hmm. IPL, the big show, that what it is. Mm -hmm. It's here and it's going to happen in UAE. And the thing is that we all need to participate from your home, of course, mm -hmm. and watch. And if you can go to the stadia with all the protection taken, you know, mask yourself and whatnot, so you this. can you can go to the stadium also because part of the stadium was open. Was open part, very part, not full. This one part. Yeah, because uh, so protocol was uh, not allowing the full thing mm. to be on. And uh, another thing, what's important here is that there's a message that was going to in India to India also that um, uh, that you know look the academies down there are slowly coming out. They are active. They are more into supporting. And IPL is using that uh, platform, leveraging that uh, advantage to sending that message. That's okay. as simple as that. All yeah. right, that's interesting. Now, moving back to the philanthropist part of you, when you've mentioned about the uh, Adivasi initiative that you've done back in India, would you like to share, share some uh, light on that? Because it's really intrigued my mind in asking this question. Yeah, uh, we started this activity in 2014. We formed an organization which is, uh, which is called Max Talent Sports and Education Institute uh, Trust. We're about seven trustees on board. And uh, the whole idea was, as I said earlier, it's a payback journey, but it was part of my dream. So I involved others also into it. Mm -hmm. And they all actually gathered around. They're all actually known friends. We all gathered around. Uh, my late wife, Anima Shetty, also was part of, the, part of that. Um, and uh, uh, then, uh, yeah, um, so our whole objective was to serve these underprivileged uh, Adivasi kids and work towards the development of them. And today with pride, I can say that there are three of them whom we have actually, we were literally hold, holding themselves out from their home mm -hmm. and send them to school when they were in sixth grade, seventh grade. Today they are graduates. Okay. They are graduates and uh, out of the three or two are uh, uh, working out. And the third one is, that is uh, doing, um, is employed by Max Talent Trust. Okay. So he takes care of all the activity that happened because the baton of the activity has to be carried on because uh, though I visit uh, once in every three months uh, back home to see that everything is in order. But there has to be somebody on the ground on a day-to-day basis mm. to look into the activation of the uh, trust program. Okay. So this lad uh, called Deepak Pawar, he does that. And uh, we are happy with what has happened. And we are happy that we have managed to, you know, uh, g gather a lot of... Uh, advantage to them with this uh, the the deprived society that i'm talking about uh, what we have distributed we have, uh, you know when i went uh, in the earlier days of 2013 14 mm -hmm. um karthik those, those, some of the guys they never had light in their home lights that i'm talking mm -hmm. about like so, so that they can study uh, obviously so evening when it is about 6 uh, 6 30 it is dark and these kids would come home, say about 5, 5.30. So what study time they would have. As it is, they were not going because uh, the parents were, you know, living on a uh, hand-to-mouth mm -hmm. scenarios. Yeah. Uh, Social economy was a big problem. But having said all this thing, bottom line is, it is, um, uh, you know, something different has to be done. So the first thing we highlight, we, we, we highlighted the problem. So we actually have solar lamp to every home, down okay. there, 25 of them. So at least the light came in. Mm -hmm. So they were just told, okay, in the daytime, please charge it by the sun. Evening, use it where there. So now there is light enough. So at least a couple of hours of study time they would get. Mm -hmm. 
And we saw the Im immediate impact of the results. Uh, then later what happened, some of the kids, they have to actually, um, uh, to traveling from home to the school was a big uh, hurdle mm -hmm. because it was about seven, eight kilometers they have to travel. So we gave them cycles. Okay. So we distributed free cycles to about at least 30 to 35 of them. And there was this school uh, in uh, in Mumbai that is called SV, SVKM, that is Sri Vile Parle Kelwani Mandal School, mm -hmm. C, uh, CNN, that's a uh, CNM, sorry, CNM. Chatrabud Narsi Munji, that's how it is. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So this school has been uh, has been uh, associated with us. They have been helping us periodically. Uh, the vice principal down there, Madam Shoma Bhattacharya. So she has uh, been getting the kids every year down to the uh, program of uh, our uh, activity that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, the program itself is called Towards Being Equal. It's a very simple uh, defined thing. You know, because there's a difference between the society there and society this side. We thought can we amalgamate, mm -hmm. uh, if not at least get closer. Mm -hmm. So these kids we're talking about the the Bombay schools, the CNM school. They are uh, upmarket uh, uh, okay. IB curriculum kids who are paying hefty sums uh, as a fees. Mm -hmm. And these Adivasi kids are virtually go go to school, no go to school. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like negligible, you know, yeah. that's it. Now, when these two society comes together, even maybe once or twice a year, and these kids, our Adivasi kids also, I would take them to, Bom to Bombay to that school. There's a lot of kind of a mind opening. Exactly. Factorization yeah. comes in both ways. Mm -hmm. Today, now, in fact, in August, uh, this August uh, um, uh, 18th and uh, so, uh, 17th and 18th, we have got an event, you know, where those kids from Bombay would come, mm -hmm. they want to cook there, okay. they want to feed others, mm -hmm. then we'll go for hiking together. So, and they're, they're you know, fac uh, uh, facilitating those things. So, it's a beautiful journey, a brilliant journey. And then uh, these kids, uh, well, those who were graduates and they have found their you know, feet on the ground and to take care of themselves and their family. Uh, it's a great feeling. It's a wonderful journey so mm -hmm. far. I have to, of course, uh, you know, we have got good support from Mr. Balaram Boyer, who is uh, well, secretary for uh, this uh, Sangathan, uh, which uh, take care of this uh, Adivasi down there. So okay. it's been nice and uh, well, I've been well supported by a friend called Subhash Patil, okay. who, is, who take care of things in Big Ten. Today, I, of course, I miss my wife, who has been a big pillar in my life as far as, you know, this support is mm -hmm. concerned. But then, well, wherever she is, I'm sure she's she is uh, yeah, happy, happy yeah. that this is happening because from Axel Global Sports also her role is um, uh, I mean she's been coming in as a manager of the team out of the 44 tour that we did she was a manager for as good as 37 of them. Okay. It not only brought a motherly touch into the team but it also got a, 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 you know the good quality administration uh, that she possessed as an administrator. She was a teacher by profession also. Okay. And uh, then um, uh, she worked for Dubai Health Authorities where she worked as an administrator, as a licensing in charge. So overall, a huge accumulated uh, experience on the table. So I think uh, possibly with uh, her uh, there where she was and me where we were, mm -hmm. I thought we were a lethal combination who Definitely. delivered and delivered well. Mm -hmm. And my two sons, they actually were also very much uh, supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, the, as I said, Siddharth who does is a virtual gamer. Virtual gamer I told, yeah. spoke about okay. him earlier. Somre Shetty, he works for ICC. So okay. they are a big pillar as far as the family mm -hmm. nucleus is concerned, which allowed me to express myself and go around the world, do what I want. Exactly. And that's important. And they are always been supporting. That's so you never different. bound, you always had that uh, ability to do what you wanted and when you wanted. Right from my childhood, I had that privilege. My parents first al first allowed me to do that. Mm -hmm. Never and uh, none of my siblings uh, possibly uh, had any issue on that. Okay. They always said that brother is different. Mm -hmm. And then, then as I grew up, uh, then later as a married person, also my wife was equally understanding and very mm -hmm. liberal minded person, and she knew that he's a free bird. Free so bird. don't try to cage him. cage him. If you want his best, leave him alone. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 let, let, let him let do him, things let the way him. he wants it. So then, uh, you know, he will only perform to his best and uh, mm -hmm. and he will uh, serve the society, serve the place, the people where it's around. And that's what I feel. Uh, I'm one of the chosen one mm -hmm. who is possibly born to serve. Okay. That's it. That's, that's nice. Then um, coming back to one of the important points that we've discussed before, you're also the 
part of the your board of director in the Saint Xavier's uh, alumni community or alumni association, if I'm not wrong. So, would you like to share some insight on that? Yeah, this is uh, well, our school, Saint Xavier's Ville Parle, um, a great institution that we are. As I said, we are uh, mm. uh, well, the, the, the institution 1890. Uh, formed one, we take pride in our school. We, pr- we take pride in whatever each of the alumni that we have produced and they have grown up. The alumni have grown and grown big, absolutely big, uh, bigger uh, uh, figures. Mm-hmm. And we thought that it was only justice that we have an alumni uh, association formed, which uh, got formed in 2012. Mm-hmm. And till now, uh, I think uh, we have been, uh, we, ha- we are more than... Um, uh, about uh, uh, three, four thousand students who are registered, who are there and registered, about thousand of them. And we do a lot of activities. Yeah, last year I got on the board as a board of director, and we as an organization, we are recognized by the uh, Society Act, Company, Society Company Act uh, of Mumbai. So uh, I think we, we, since the school has been so great to us, served us, so our job is to give back the school, the payback mm-hmm. journey. And uh, collectively, all the board of directors as well as all the members are committed into driving this uh, organization forward through sports, through academy, through social activities. And now recently, we also j- launched a product, product which is called Employment Cell, which is, you know, we are giving free okay. employment uh, opportunity, putting them to interviews for every Zevrite mm-hmm. for zero money. So that's we what don't they charge call them. Zevrites. Zevrites. So okay. we don't charge anything. It's just free. Because unto others is our uh, tagline. Mm. So it's everything that is done, it's done for them. In fact, 15th August, we got a cup, which is called Fraternity Cup. That's for football. Okay. And uh, well, where I'm actually gearing up to be there for that uh, uh, event. Okay. So a lot of groundwork right now has been done. So mm. physical deliverance will be on 15th. Okay. So um, yeah, I think um, uh, we are very happy. We're a big, happy community, happy family of uh, fellow Zevrites connecting batch Right, uh, like we have the oldest guy right now with us who is 1964, mm-hmm. and uh, as a young guy, somebody who's just passed out 2024, okay, because the results were just out in uh, March, March, April, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And when you are uh, you know touching uh, those generations, mm-hmm. it's big swing, big swings, yeah. But then a Zevrite is a Zevrite, okay, doesn't matter which batch he's from, and uh, for them, they see also us, mm-hmm. you know. With them, the younger ones, they're also happy. They feel that, oh my God, what a school we are. Mm-hmm. How proud we are. Of so school. that's uh, what it is. So great future ahead for that for our in, in, in institution, for our yes. associations also. Man, uncle, you're a very, uh, very interesting life altogether. But my the question that's really uh, eating me from inside is, what's next on your list now? All this is, you know, it's happened. There's a lot of experiences done. What next have you planned out for the rest of the journey? I don't know much about tomorrow because okay. I live on a day-to-day basis. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I have a lot of things right now in my hand. The, 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 the Adivasi project is an ongoing basis. Then you look into our Zevrite uh, alumni uh, association activity is another add-on thing. Uh, plus, beside that... Um, uh, I think uh, Max Talent Global Sports is concerned. It will, it goes, it goes on on its own merit. Okay. Though my interest on that side is a bit a little dwindling down because uh, the other, I think uh, the payback journey that I am into has to now increase no. or maybe five folds. So there could be many things that will be accommodated into that give back thing that can happen. Okay. Um, I won't, I've been traveling around the world, but now, yes, I will be spending more time traveling. Uh, a lot of friends, they, they do complain that I don't visit them, not seen them for long and whatnot. So spend some time with them. Recently, okay. I've been into US to watch the World Cup. World Cup, yeah. Uh, there's a clip of you in the match when it was live, where you were chilling over there with the flag of India. <laughs> I think everyone's also seen that as well. Yeah, I think for two to four time, and I think the cameraman was in love with me. Was he? <laughs> I thought so. So um, yeah, that was a match between India and USA. USA. So and I was with my school, uh, uh, with my batchmates, in fact. Okay. So we were they are they, we, they all uh, we, uh, that, that was in New York. So two of my friends they came. One came from Delaware, and the other came from Virginia State. Mm-hmm. So they came down. They uh, drove on six hours, mm-hmm. and we had a good uh, time uh, watching the match. 
We, yeah, and then uh, that covering up by the mm. uh, cameraman was um, icing on the top. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thanks to my son uh, who actually made it happen. Okay. So uh, I got uh, I got to, uh, to visit US, and then I thought that uh, yeah, really that I could uh, that uh, I was there for about twelve days. It could have been extended for much more, much more. to have much more fun. So next time I promised them that I come and we'll play a lot of cricket. Okay. Definitely. We all, all the guys, they are cricket buffs. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, spreading the good word of the game, that will always be my mantra. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, helping a human being wherever it matters uh, in my service been committed with the needy ones. I'm always game down there. Um, but as far as personal individual, I think there's nothing much in my bucket list. Okay. Travel, have yeah. fun. Meet people, enjoy life the best way you can Mm -hmm. and keep training hard to stay fit, stay healthy, be happy and (laughs) Chalti ka naam gaadi. Barti ka naam gaadi. (laughs) So just to summarize and end up everything, what would be your word of advice or what is something that uh, you would advise me or, you know, the younger generation up to, you know, have a healthy, better life and even in terms of their business decisions and stuff like that, what would you suggest them to do right? Things that you see that are maybe not happening as much uh, in today's time. Karthik, there is nothing called a fixed formula. Okay. Every person is different. His opportunities are different. Opportunity that comes to him is different. Situation is different. Possibly the environment that you operate is different. Okay. So you have to amalgamate into that different in your own way. Okay. There is no fixed ideas of life that, okay, it, what, uh, what possibly has uh, uh, worked with uh, uh, Sudhakar Shetty, it will work with you. you. But yes, ideas can be ticked. Okay. okay this could, because he, okay, he, he has done this. And I'm, uh, your, your dad possibly, your uncle possibly, mm-hmm. your, some of your friend or someone, anyone. Okay, they have done that. Let me see how it works. But you need to be in your own actually thought process mm-hmm into amalgamating those experiences and see that how does it fit in. Mm-hmm. If it fits in, very well. Otherwise, you need to find your own way out. Okay. When you're finding your own way out, you may make mistakes. Not that we didn't make mistakes. We did. We are not talking much about our mistakes. Okay. We might have told what we did and how it worked. Because if you take a person like me, I think a lot of failures actually rule, rule my life than success. Mm-hmm. But it is those failures which has actually added to my success. Mm. Okay. Right? And uh, me, I got never worried, concerned to take decision. Okay. Right? Wrong? Not right, wrong. Like Max Talent for possibly taking a decision to start an academy uh, after being in corporate world for 23 years. It was a big shift, big change. It, it worked. That worked because I put all my sports, my organizing skill, my... my uh, 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 facilitation ideas, marketing ideas, all put together and it bloomed. It worked. Okay. So it's very simple. So it's not very great difficult thing. It's not that, you know, my success story could be yours. Mm-hmm. No, your success story be your own. Oh. If you can, you can script it, script it your way. Take ideas. Okay. But don't think by reading books, you're going to succeed. By watching them somewhere on the screen, you're going to succeed. No, it's going to give you ideas. But... Script, you have to write your own script to make it happen. Okay. You might have thought in a scale of 1 to 10 that you want to be hitting 9 or 10. Now be happy even if you made 6. Be happy you made 5. Remember, it's still better than 0. <laughs> 1 is also better. The zero. You keep working on it. Okay. And the world says it. I'm not saying it in a different way. No replacement for hard work. Mm-hmm. Hard work has to be there. But work intelligently, work smartly. Okay. Yeah, because many people, uh, they worked hard and they got hardly anything. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that that's a demerit. But if they worked intelligently, smart, they would have reached and gone to places. So, you generation has an advantage. The smart apps are around you. (laughs) Smart The smart environment is around you. Mm. And you got smart ideas with you. Just make it happen. Definitely. 
thank you so much uncle it was a pleasure a lovely pleasure speaking to you so a lot to take in a lot to process the experiences that you come around with and i definitely want to do this again with you even if not here we can do this outside probably when you're walking down our building sometime somewhere sure thank you very much karthik for having me no here with you on your first podcast no i much. wish you all success thank you so much and um, yes it was pleasure sharing uh, time with you yeah, yeah. you thank take you so care much.